So now we're going to add some of the other types of uh, enemy planes. Right now we only have uh, one type, that's this one. This is going to be the parent plane for most of the, okay. So we have, um, this is what we have so far for the basic enemy. In the step event, we check to see if it's about to come on screen or if it's gone off the bottom of the screen. And if so, we, d we destroy it because we don't want to have to keep track of it anymore. Uh, the other thing, the other thing you need to do is uh, check to see if it's about to come on screen, and if it is, that's when you started moving. Okay. Okay. Other things we put in: uh, if the enemy plane hits the parent, they they lose uh, ten points, or the I guess damage increases by ten. We're using health to kind of keep track of damage, um, and then uh, you destroy instance of the enemy plane and you make a little explosion. If a bullet hits the enemy plane, it adds 10 to the score, destroys both the bullet and the plane, and then shows another explosion, just that explosion one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first thing you do when you create new enemies is you create the sprites for those enemies. So we say create sprite, and then we're going to call this one enemy left, so this is one that flies from the left side of the screen. And if I go to my uh, shared folder for game design, that's here. You go to book resources. I think it's chapter nine, is it? Yeah. So here's enemy left, it's kind of an orange color plane. And we do want to remove the background. When you create these planes, we want to make them centered right in the middle of the plane. Yeah. Yeah, right now it's out. But when it comes back, you can grab it. Okay. Um, okay. And then we also want to make one for the right flying plane. Center that one as well. Okay, so the idea here is we want these planes to fly in from the side. Uh, we're doing a kind of a modification of what we see in the book. So the side flyers are a little bit different. You can't get them moving uh, right as they're about to come on screen because they'll just fly across the top of the room and you ne never see it. So we have to come up with a different strategy to make the, these two planes work. Uh, the first thing we want to do though is uh, we want to give them We'll create objects using them, and object, enemy right, and left. I'll just do right, you can do left later. And the sprite is here. Except I didn't choose the sprite, did I? Let me load that. Okay. We'll center that. So here's our enemy right. It's going to start on the left side of the screen and, and, and uh, move to the right. So I'm trying to find the speed here that they want us to use. Okay, so we want to make, make it move the same speed as the, the uh, down flying plane. That's this one. The speed we used in that was 2. I think we want at least 4 for enemy right. So here. We're going to set, uh, in the create event, we're going to set, set it going to the right speed of four. So it's coming from the left side of the screen, but flying right. Yeah, Jorge. No, we're just doing a one player game. So the, the modifications of what we're doing that's different from the book, if you go out to uh, the shared folder, let's say right here, in game design, there's a PDF document that describes what's changed. It's called, I guess it's a Word document, Revised Wingman Sam. And these are the things you have to change in, uh, change in the one that's in the book to be the one that I want. So it goes through, uh, instead of pretending to simulate motion, you're actually moving through the room. So you have to implement all these changes. Uh, for now, what we're saying is that with object enemy one or object plane one, just put anything that's plane one or parent into, into object plane one. Okay? 
but you have to do all these changes to modify the room. It's about three pages of changes. And that's all in the shared folder. So for those of us who may have been copying this off the internet and then turning it in, uh, it's not going to work on this one. You actually have to understand it. All right, uh, let's go back to our plane. We say yes. That's in the creative end. And I'm going to put it, um, put one in the room and just to see what happens. So here's my test room. Uh, remember, our room is now elongated, so we have a lot, a lot of planes here. And here's the start. So maybe I put one here, maybe right there, or <coughs> kind of right there, let's say. And so our hope is that we'll see the plane. Uh, as we're flying up. Let's try that. Here's our plane, and we're hoping to see the, oh wow. See how it started moving before we got there? It was halfway across the screen. You know, if it was any higher up on the room, say we go up a little bit higher here, and maybe put it here, what you'll see is we probably won't even see it, because just like the green planes, we don't want them to start moving until it's time to move, or until it's time to come on the screen. We don't want the orange plane to do that either. So we're going to have to add some smarts to the orange plane. There's our first formation. Still looking for the orange plane. And by this point, the orange plane's already gone off the other side of the room. Okay? So we want, we want to wait until the orange plane is about to come out of the room. So we put in something similar as we do with Logic Enemy Basic. So an enemy basic, what we said was this one here. In the step event, we're doing all these things. So let's try to do something similar for the side flyer. So we add a step event. And then uh, we'll, we'll paste in what we had. And it says if y is larger than view, y view plus 480. Well, what we're trying to see is if the plane went off the bottom of the room. The problem with the right flying planes is they don't go off the bottom typically. They go off to the side. Once it goes off the right side of the room, you, you want to uh, destroy it because you're not going to see it anymore. So we change this one. Instead of Y, we're going to modify X. And we're going to say uh, room width. That doesn't change. We made the room longer, but we didn't make it wider. So we changed the variable to x. We change the value we want to check it with to room width. And if it's larger than the room width, then we know it's gone off the right side of the room so we can get rid of it. So that's what we do. We just destroy ourselves. Yeah, so I'm doing object enemy right. It's front, flying from the left to the right. Now we say this, if y is larger than a view, y view minus 40, that means it's about to come on screen. That then what we want to do is, is get it started moving. And so we're going to set this to 4 like we had before. And now we can get rid of the create event. Because we don't want it to move when it starts. So if we delete the create event, then all we need is a step event. Another thing we need to do is set the parent for enemy right to be uh, enemy basic, yeah. And what that'll do is is take care of this collision with the, the player plane, bullets. Same thing will happen. We're overriding the step event, so this will be different. Everything else is the same. Okay, so let's try it now and see if we actually see our plane. There it is, right there. See that? So it didn't start moving until we were about to come on screen. Now, it still kind of comes at you pretty fast. So what I like to do, um, yeah, I guess this is the way we're going to have to do it. I'm trying to think of an easier way to do this, but. Yeah, we'll just do it like that. That'll be simple. Now when you want to set up your formations, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You go to the room. 
and you can just uh, put your scythe flyers, you know, one right after the other, okay? And you only have to put them on the edge of the room. You could try putting them out here. It seems to let you do that, so that might be a better spot. The problem is we can't put the planes outside the room on the left because it doesn't have any concept of that. So you have to do it kind of like this. This is about as good as you're going to get. So let's try to s try that and see what it looks like. So if this works, you want your left one to uh, pretty much work the same way, but uh, instead of testing for room width, you're testing if it's smaller than zero for the x coordinate. Yeah, that looks pretty good. See how they start moving one at a time, one before the other? That looks pretty cool. Okay, so now we got to see if uh, the bullets are affecting the right flyers. We also want to crash our plane into one of them. Just to double check that it's behaving the way we want. Okay, so let's see if I can hit that first wave. I hit the first one, I shoot, I shoot button. Yeah, so they blow up, I get some score. If they hit me, it takes away some score. So I didn't have to put that in, in uh, object enemy right. You get that from object enemy basic. So that's the right flyers. I'll let you do the left flyers, but it's pretty much similar, okay? Uh, the next one we want to do is the, uh, the backward flying plane. Uh, so the sprite for that is the blue plane, so let's create that sprite first. And this would be... Uh, it's uh, enemy up. Okay, thanks. So it's a blue plane, but it's going to fly from the bottom of the screen to the top. This is the one I dislike because you can't really prepare for it. It's really hard to shoot. Okay. You want to center that. Sprite enemy up. So the, the sprite is uh, enemy up, the blue plane. See that? We'll center that, and then we'll create an object for that as well. And this would be object enemy up. Now when you create these object names, you don't want to use any spaces. Because a lot of the time that confuses the, the compiler that's trying to make sense of your code here. Right. And so we're going to put a few of these in the room. Uh, perhaps. We'll put them right here to start with. Okay, so I'm going to check now. Uh, we want to do the similar thing like we did with right. Let's just copy the step event again. So all I'm doing is going into the right flyer and trying to figure out what's different for the up flyer. So I add a step event, step, step event, to object enemy up. And I'll paste in what I had for the right flyer. Now this one's kind of weird because um, it's really hard to tell when to get them moving. Uh, what has to happen is that you need to w this um, this plane starts out invisible and not moving, okay? And it'll scroll through the entire room, not interacting with anything, and then when it goes off the bottom, it becomes visible, and you give it a speed of six coming up. So this one's a lot more difficult than the other ones. This is probably the hard, hardest one. Okay, so in the create event, well, we're going to start with it being completely invisible, okay? So you want to uncheck visible. And then you need to add a specialized collision events to the things you don't want it to interact with. If it's invisible and not moving, you don't want when the plane hits it, the, the player plane, to actually damage the plane. You just want to ignore it. Okay. 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so here's object enemy plane one. We first have to check to see if it's visible before we do anything with it. So we're going to test that variable here. The variable is visible. And if it's zero, it's not visible. And if it's one, it is visible. So if it's an invisible, then we just want to exit. Okay. Um, if we get past this exit, then we know it's visible and we should do something. So then we do our standard collision event. So uh, like say for enemy basic, here's a collision with the plane and we want to just do the same thing as we did for enemy basic. Enemy up. So we want to paste those in here. Pretty tiny, yeah. No. Yeah, the variable, I'll just read to you. Uh, the variable you want to check for is visible. If visible is value is zero, it says equal to. So if visible equals zero, then just exit this event because we don't want anything to happen if the plane isn't moving at and is invisible. We want to wait till it starts moving before we make it visible and be able to interact with it. Okay. Then uh, if it is visible, then we, we take 10 from the health or add 10 to the damage. Uh, we destroy the up plane and then we create a little explosion just like we did with the other ones. So that's just a little bit different. We first have to check to see if we're visible. Also, we want to ignore bullets as well. Yeah. Create instance of object explosion one. Yeah, let me get it. All right. OK, so I'm back. Um, the other thing you have to uh, add a specialized collision event with is, is the bullet. So the bullet here. And uh, what do we want to do? Yeah, we want to check to see if it's in, it, check to see if it's visible first before we do anything else. So again, we say uh, visible. If it's set to zero, then we just want to exit the event. We don't want anything else to happen. Just ignore it. And then we uh, do the same thing we did for right. Uh, actually. I guess it's uh, enemy basic. It's this one. We'll do all these things. So go to enemy basic, go to the collision with the bullet, and copy those same actions. That's what should happen in enemy up. If you don't want to, if you don't want to have to copy all those, there's a special way you can avoid that by this one. If you use this one off the control menu. It's called call event, call inherited event. And what it's going to do is call the parent plane's uh, bullet collision function. So you can either call it or you can paste it in. It's up to you. Uh, here's what it looks like pasted in. Okay. You check to see if it's visible. If, it, if it's invisible, just exit. Otherwise, do the normal things you would do when a bullet hits the plane. Yeah. This one here? Oh, yeah, you could do it the other way. It's just, um, I kind of like this way, but yeah, what he's saying is that you could say equal to one. You know, that means it's visible. And then you would, you would have to delete this, but then put brackets around it. Okay, so just a little bit more coding. So you can do that any any way you want. I inverted the conditional here, but what I was doing earlier is I put a zero here saying it's invisible. Whatever seems more comfortable. And then, then you don't have to put the uh, start and end of blocks. Okay. So again, any usually in Game Maker there's two or three different ways to do the same thing. Okay. Okay.
So let's add a, let's take a look at the backwards flyers just to see what they're doing right now. They're still not quite the way we want them. Okay, so our backwards flying planes, we never see them. Right now they're underneath the panel and we can't see them, nor do they get going. Okay. So in the step event, for enemy up, just make sure we're in the right one. We want to first check to see if uh, Y is larger than uh, view, uh, Y view, and uh, plus the height of our screen, which is 480. So if it's larger than that, we want to make it visible and then give it an initial speed. So, um, I'll, I'll show you again what that is, but what I'm saying is if the Y coordinate of the plane is, is below the screen, you take the view Y view plus 480, which is the screen height. If it's larger than that, then we know we need to make it visible. We also have to give it a speed. So we set visible to 1. And that will make it so that the player can see it now. And then we'll also get it moving up the screen at uh, 4, I guess. Okay. So we get it moving. The other problem you're going to have with uh, the backwards flying planes is uh, you got to get rid of them once they go off the top of the screen. But it has to be visible when you do that. So we have to ask the question again. Yeah. I said four, because remember they're coming at us at two, and so we'll we'll see if that's a good speed. It might be a little slow, but we'll try. Well, I haven't set these yet. Let me. Uh, okay. So what we have here is if it scrolls off the bottom, then make it visible and give it a speed going up the screen. Um, and then we want to ask one more question. It's the same variable, visible. If it's visible and they've, uh, and it's less than, so y is less than. Uh, view Y view. That means it's gone off the top of the sh top of the screen. If that's the case, for those, if those two things are true, that, okay, I'll, I'll go through it one more time so you can see. Okay, the first one is Y uh, larger than view Y view, which is the top left corner of the view, plus 480, which is the height of the room. And we'll, what we do inside is I put a starter block and I say, okay, it's, it's scrolled off the bottom of the, the window. So now we want to make it visible and get it moving. So we set visible to 1, not relative. And then we say, okay, it needs to start moving now. And so we get it moving up the screen at a speed of four. Then you have to ask these two questions. If it's visible and it comes off the top of the screen, then we want to destroy it. But what's weird about this is if it's invisible and it's less than the, the top of the view, we don't want to destroy it because it hasn't moved yet. If we destroyed it just based on where it was, then all the blue planes in the room would disappear as soon as you started the game. So that makes it kind of hard. Yeah, thanks. All right, so let's see if this works out. Just trying it out.
Okay, so we have some right at the start. So here they come. Yeah, it's a little slow. Uh, it's uh, smaller than. Yeah, it's smaller than. So those plane, those planes seem a little bit slow. So we're going to increase this then to six to see if that's good. You might even think about eight. But yeah. Yeah, they should be beneath the control panel. So if you look at the panel, the depth is zero. So if you want it to be, and we know the islands are 10, and the planes are 5. I think we want to use the same as the planes, so we're going to say 5. So we'll set the depth to 5. Also, enemy right, we'll set 5. <coughs> Yeah. Enemy basic, yeah, we had it five. So we're saying all the planes are at level five or depth five. Now, if I go into my room right now, this is the interesting part. Yeah. So I'm going to take these out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put them later in the room. I might put them here. And the hope is that... The hope is that you won't see any interactions with these planes until it scrolls off the bottom. And then they'll start to move going up to the top. And then you can shoot at them. Now, we didn't say what happens when the, I guess we did, the bullet hits them. I think we have all this covered. Yeah. You may want to put on the parent uh, object enemy basic, but I don't think in this case it will make any difference. Because we've overridden all the different events for the parent here at the child. Let's try it now and see if we see the blue planes. The important part is not interacting with them before they get through the room. Okay, so near the start here. There's our side flyers. Oops, hang on. The button. And there should be blue planes right about here. See how they went through the room and I didn't interact with them? So that's how you can put the blue planes in your room, is uh, you just set them anywhere in the room. Those will scroll through the room, not moving and invisible. Once it gets to the bottom of the view, they're going to become visible and now have a positive speed going up the screen, or a negative speed, I guess, because it's negative vertically. Okay. So again, just to go over that one one more time, uh, in the step event, you check to see if it's gone off the bottom of the room. If it is, you make it visible, and you get it moving up. Speed of six seems pretty good. Um, and then you ask this question. If it's visible and it's gone off the top of the view, and they're flying backwards, then you do want to delete the blue plane so that they don't interact. Uh, with the plane, uh, again, you don't want it, when the enemy uh, is invisible and hits the plane, you don't want it to do anything. So uh, you check that first. And if it's invisible, just ignore it. Otherwise, do the standard stuff you do for planes hitting your plane. And then finally, uh, for the bullet, you just check to see if it's visible before you do anything with the bullet. Okay. So that one's the hard, hardest one, I think, in the game. Now the last two, uh, there's a type of plane that just shoots straight down the screen. And there's a type of plane that shoots uh, at you. And so we're going to look at those two, those two uh, right now. So the sprite we need, I think, is uh, sprite uh, enemy shoot, oops, keep doing my caps lock. I hate this keyboard, it's a MacBook.
So here's an enemy shoe, it's a white plane, and you want to center it. We also want uh, this target, and this one will target your plane. And it looks like that. And we'll center that. Okay, so let's create those objects now. Before we create the plane, we probably need one other sprite, and that's the bullet that it shoots. The bullet's really tiny. So let's uh, create that sprite as well. Sprite underscore bullet. And this is th these are the bullets coming from the enemy plane. So I say load sprite. Enemy bullet, there it is. It's really tiny. And you want to center those as well. And you center them so, so the bullet comes out from the middle of the plane. Also, I'm going to create an object bullet. So object, uh, what do we call it? Yeah, we already have a sprite bullet, so I've got to fix that first. We'll say enemy bullet. Yeah. Yeah, somebody has a pass right now, so you have to wait till they come back. So we'll use our uh, bullet sprite. Yeah, so these, see how I named this one bullet and that one? That's bad. That'll really mess up uh, Game Maker. So make sure you don't have name collisions like that. You can spend hours trying to find out what's wrong with because of a name collision. The sprite names have to be different than the object's names. And you shouldn't use the same sprite name twice or the same object, object name price, twice in the object's folder. Okay, say OK. So we have our bullet, and now we can create our um, we can create our uh, plane that, that shoots at you. So object enemy shoot is what we're making. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to set the parent to uh, enemy basic. That will inherit the the step event and all, all the other events, the collision event. Uh, for this one, no, that's correct. Sprite enemy bullet. Sprite enemy. It's a little tiny one. Yeah, object enemy shoot is the plane that shoots at you. Oh, you're right. It's not the bullet. He's paying attention. That's good. Yeah, we want sprite enemy shoot. Sorry, we're shooting bullets. Okay, so uh, we set the parent to object enemy basic, and then every once in a while we want to shoot a bullet. So what we do is we add a step step event, which is gets called every frame, and we want to roll the dice. So this one. Say we want to shoot every 40 frames or so. But the way dice work is kind of interesting. You roll the dice, and if you happen to get a 1 on that 40-sided dice roll, then it will shoot a bullet. If you didn't roll, roll a 1, then you're not going to generate a bullet this frame. So about every 40 frames or so, you're going to get a 1, and that's when you shoot. Uh, so it's kind of an odd thing, but it's always testing for one. With one out of 40 per next number. If that comes out as one or is true, then we want to create moving a bullet that's here. And this is where we use the bullet. We, might, we want to center it on the, the plane that's shooting. The speed, let's see what they, they suggest for the speed. The speed is 
speed is six, but remember we're already coming down two. So we're gonna have to subtract two, so that'll be four. And the direction will be straight down the screen. Okay? It's relative to your current position. For direction I said two seventy. You know, right is one eight or right is zero, ninety straight up, one eighty is left, two seventy is down. And that should create a bullet every once in a while. So let's put a few of these in the game. And see if it works the way we think. Okay, so let's put some of the plants in the room. And our hope is And what you'll notice is there are a big problem, and I'll show you what the problem is. Okay, so here's my plane flying along. And what you'll notice is all these bullets coming at me. The white planes aren't even in the room yet, okay? And they're already shooting at me. Nor are they moving properly, okay? So this, I call this the shower of bullet problem. You don't want it really be shooting at you or moving until it's about to come on screen, right? Otherwise, every white plane in the room is going to shoot at you the entire time and you, you will not survive. Not well. Okay? So we have to put some smarts in it so it doesn't shoot at us before we're ready. So, um, so what we say then is, um, I'm trying to remember how to do this. Okay, so you go here, you say a uh, variable is y, and then we say view y view minus 40, so it's just above the top of the screen. If it's larger than that, okay, if it's larger than that, but then we want to uh, get it moving. So that, that would be here. Again, the bullets are. Yeah, it's minus forty. Because you're trying to see, you know, view by view is the top of the screen. Minus forty is just a little bit higher, right? Because it's negative or a y grows negative up and positive down. So you have to subtract forty from that. If it's just about to come on screen, then we're gonna get it moving down at a speed of, <laughs> I think we said two. Okay. Yeah. What was that? This one? Movement? I, uh, speed I said is two. I wanted to make the same as the uh, enemy basic. Let me just check that. The speed is two. Yeah. So here, yeah, we set the speed. Oh, actually, looking at the bullet. Yeah, for this plane, it moves down at two. Ooh, I didn't press it though. So if y is larger than view y, view minus 40, we have it moved down at the speed of two. We need to go over to the control tab. And we don't want to generate a bullet. Um, actually, this needs to go here. Okay. So you check to see if it's about to come on screen. If it is, you start it moving. Or if it's already moving, it's still moving. And then you check to see if you're supposed to create a bullet, if you rolled a one. And if you did, that's when you create the bullet. So with these changes now, you're not going to have the shower of bullets problem. Okay, so now the bullets don't start happening until they're about to come on screen. The bullets and the planes are flying over the panel though, so we have to fix that. So we're going to set the depth for the plane to five, and then also the bullets set the depth to five. So we have the, the islands at 10, we have the planes at 5, and then we have the panel at 0. Okay? 
So there's one last plane, uh, enemy plane, we need to talk about. I know we're kind of going through all the planes, but again, we're recording it, so if it's too much right now, you can you can listen to it later. Um, so let's make our final plane then. And this is the, the plane that targets you. So spray. And in the book, they call it enemy target. And we'll load that sprite. Hmm. I think we already have that one. Yeah, we do already have it. So I made it earlier. So we want to use that one. And let's see if I have a target plane. It doesn't look like I do, so that's that's what I need to do. Yeah, so you should have only one sprite. And this is a this is the sprite that's going to shoot you. That's that one. We'll set the depth to 5. We'll set the parent to enemy basic. Okay. All right. Um, we'll borrow some ideas from here, which is the step event for enemy shoot, and we're going to copy that to the step event of enemy target. All right. So I went to enemy shoot and just copied all the stuff from there into this one. The only thing different here is instead of uh, instead of shooting straight down the screen, it's going to shoot at uh, at you. So we need a, a special type of bullet. Yeah, the target means it's going to target your plane and shoot a bullet at it. So, um, so we do need one more object, and that's a bullet that shoots towards the object. So we say object. enemy, and this is called aim one. Now we only have one plane instead of two. And we're just going to use the, the bullet sprite. Object enemy aim one. The book says to call the bullet that. Yeah, it aims at the first player. AIM, yes. O object enemy aim one. Okay, so we want this to occur uh, infrequently. So what we do is in the step event, instead of every 40 steps or so, we're going to set that equal to 100, because these are harder to avoid. So every 100 frames or so, this plane is going to shoot directly at your position. And then here, we just say, uh, instead of create moving, We'll delete that, and we're just going to create it and have its create event uh, move it towards the target. So let's do that. Um, here, instead of create moving, we're just saying create. Okay, and we're creating an enemy aim one. That's the bullet that, and then we say relative. That will create the bullet, but if we um, if we try it now, you'll you'll notice the problem. Let's put some of those in the game, yeah. and I'll show you how to fix the problem next. Okay, so here's some uh, of those planes, and we're going to see uh, what happens here. Sad. See how it's dropping bullets, but the bullets aren't moving? They don't do anything, yeah. So a couple of problems there. Uh, first problem is that the these bullets need to have the other bullets as a parent. So that's enemy bullet. So you got to do that. That way when they hit your plane, it takes a score away. 
But also in this, we need to uh, create a. We have to make a create event. Okay, so we're adding a create event to the the bullet, the one that aims at the plane, and we want to count. We want to make sure that there is an enemy plane before we start trying to move towards it, or it'll, or it'll crash. So we want to make sure there's at least one enemy plane or one uh, player plane. And we want to make sure that there's at least one of those. Okay. If that's the case, then we're going to do this new action we haven't really talked about before. And the action is uh, move towards. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Step towards. And what are we stepping towards? Uh, for our X, we say, and then make sure to spell this the same way as uh, you wrote it over here on the on the left side. It has to be the exact same name. Object plane one dot X. Object plane one dot Y. The speed uh, they're suggesting eight as our speed. And it says stop at. Yeah, they don't say anything, so that must be okay. So it's going to move towards uh, wherever the plane is. Yeah. So we're in the create event of object enemy aim one. We count up to make sure there's a plane that hasn't blown up yet, because you can't move towards something that doesn't exist. So you first check to see if it exists. And if it does, we want to take a step towards that object, and it's going to move eight pixels per frame. So it's moving pretty fast. Okay, and it's not relative. Okay. okay otherwise, so you go to the control panel, you say else, and then if the plane's not there, we're just going to shoot straight down, just so that the program doesn't crash. I think we said two was the speed. Else, yeah. And then move, just move straight down. Two. Okay. Uh, is there anything else we need to do? Um, we didn't actually make a collision event with the enemy bullet. Yeah, I'm trying to see if that's anywhere. There's enemy bullet, no. Anyone, no. Okay, so I would say an enemy bullet, we have to add a collision event. With plane one, what, what do we want to happen? We want to delete the bullet. You want to subtract one from health, or subtract 10 from health, so you would say, Set variable. And again, I'll have this as a video if you need to watch it again. So our value is health. And we're going to subtract off 10 relative. And maybe a little explosion. Um, yeah, we'll we'll try this a different way next time. Uh, negative ten, yes. Uh, we want the explosion, right? Is it relative? Yes. The first one. The second one. Yes, it's relative. Because we want to subtract ten. Okay. Hey, you're back. Is that the yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now I think this all works. Let's try it. Here comes the side flyers. 
It's all right. Yeah. Because you're trying to pull it. It's still not. The bullets aren't quite shooting at us yet. Uh, explosion one. So you go up because you want to go up. <laughs> this doesn't seem to work. Maybe we're we're shooting the wrong one. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, so I gotta troubleshoot this. 